Hi, my name is Eugene, this is Captain Design TV, and today we're going to be talking about virtual reality. For anybody who's interested, in the last month I've been very adamant about getting VR out there into the public. I've been going to a lot of different events where I'm either demoing my newly released VR film journey, which is part of this YouTube channel, or I've been sitting on panels or giving talks and lectures about how VR can make YouTube specifically better. And just like my film, you don't need to be able, you don't need to have a complicated game engine and you don't need really expensive 360 cameras to create VR. You can actually do it all within Adobe After Effects, which is really, really cool. But it does require a couple of plugins. Now, today I'm going to be talking about one of the two big plugins that I used for my film, Journey, and that is Element 3D from a company called Video Copilot. Now, it is a, it is by far one of my favorite plugins to use. I use it all the time, and I try to find new and interesting ways to use it, including my VR film. So, we're just gonna jump into it, and we're gonna start learning Element 3D. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a brand new composition. I'm going to call it E, D, E 3D. Uh, it's going to be 1080 by 1920, 30 frames a second, five seconds long. And really this is just to demonstrate what this software can do. So once we have our composition, the next thing we need to do is bring in a solid. So if you go to layer, new, and solid, uh, just get a black solid. I'm gonna call it E3D, hit okay. And then I'm going to go over to my effects and presets, grab element 3D, drop it onto that layer. And inside of your effects control panel, you should see this. Once you hit scene setup, a new panel will populate. Now, this is basically your very own 3D engine. And you can do a lot of things in here. Like for instance, you can bring in primitives that come with the software. So like round box, very cool. All you have to do is hit it, it'll populate. It'll also show up inside of a folder under materials, under the presets. There's scene materials and there's preset materials. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a Chrome, just grab it and drop it on. So if I hit okay, it'll take us directly out to our main composition and you can see right there. Now if I go to our panel, I go to drop down for group one, I can go to particle replicator. I can move it, say we want 10 particles now, you won't see anything run away, but if we change it, our replicator shape to sphere, oh, there we go. Now, they're all inside of each other, so why don't we go ahead and move the position, the Z position out, and we'll go ahead and separate them a little bit. Awesome. We can also control the scale. We can rotate everything. Under rotation, move this back to zero. And you'll see why. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this count probably 30. Awesome. And I'm gonna move it a little bit further down and separate everything a little bit. So as you're going down the line for your group you'll notice you have a ton of effectors, such as position noise. You can scatter objects just slightly. I'm gonna change it back for the next piece. And then we can control the particle look. So say I wanna Change the particle size. Change the tint. Now if I didn't have a uh, 
a material on here that would actually show up. I can control the opacity. I can control baked animations that are inside. I can control a def the deformer. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and... And now if you're trying to move these and nothing's happening, make sure that you have it enabled. Awesome. And that will be our group one. But say we go to scene setup and we grab another round box, but instead I'm gonna move it into say another folder and move that to group two. What we can actually do is control group two, control the particle look, the size, the replicator, let's do 25, move it to say a sphere as well. Now if we go down to particle size, X, Y, Z, overall, and just make it smaller and say, move the Z scale back a little bit. So it's actually inside of where the other one is. What we can then do is go down to the animation engine and we can control the two groups animating from each other. Oh yeah, enable it. So, but if we go through, is that cool? I think that's cool. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is I'm actually going to just hit reset. Awesome. And when I hit reset, it's going to remove everything. Now, Andrew Kramer uh, worked on the last Star Wars movie and he was nice enough to give out this free Star Wars pack so everybody can, you know, play around with uh, some Star Wars assets, which I think is pretty great. And maybe we'll have, maybe we'll have this little uh, R2-D2. Yeah, let's have R2-D2. And I'm gonna put them inside of the second group. I'm gonna move this, this corridor inside of the first group. And I'm gonna hit okay. Now, right away, you can see that R2-D2 and the corridor are completely mismatched. And that's not a problem. So first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to go ahead and grab group one. We're gonna change the rotation. Probably 90 degrees. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move the Z rotation up and we're gonna bring it down just a little bit. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to group two. I'm going to go ahead and grab R2-D2 and I'm going to shrink him a bit. So particle size. Actually, I'm having trouble finding him. So why don't we go ahead and go down to opacity. Bring it down. And awesome. R2-D2 just happens to be way back there. So I'm gonna go back to group two where R2-D2 is. I'm going to bring him up in Z space. I'm gonna bring him down a little bit. And now he is huge for this room. So I'm gonna go ahead and shrink him just a little bit. Particle size, awesome. Now I'm gonna go back to group one, return the opacity all the way back up.
And now if we look really closely, R2-D2 is actually in the floor. So I'm gonna go back, raise him up just a little bit. Awesome. So what happens if we So what happens if we bring in a camera? So new camera. Awesome. 35 millimeter. Perfect. So maybe the next thing we're going to do with our camera is we're going to go ahead and bring it back. And I'm going to go up to the Track Z camera tool. And maybe I'm going to make this position and then really just go into perfect. Maybe hit F9, so it just, it's not like a dead stop. Like it fades into it. Now as we go closer, you can actually see R2-D2 reflecting on the floor, which is pretty sweet. And you can see the lights actually bouncing off of R2-D2 on his chrome top here. Now, I like the idea of, you know, there being some text on this inside of 3D. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna grab the type tool. I'm going to go ahead and type R2D2 in white text. I don't know why. It doesn't actually matter what color the text is, but that's what we're gonna do. So now if we jump back into element 3D, go to scene setup. Oh, I forgot to do something really quick. So if we, so something else that you can actually create 3D objects directly from custom layers, the masks or text. So if you go to custom layers, text and masks and go down to R2D2, then go inside. I'm gonna grab another folder. I'm gonna change it to number three and then hit extrude. You're going to see R2D2, the text that we put down earlier is now a 3D object and it can be moved around and it can be reshaped. and it can be rotated. Just hit okay. So let's try to find it now. Uh, I'm gonna go to group three, change. I'm gonna change the, go to the particle look. I'm gonna, oh, it looks like it's way back there somewhere. So let's go ahead and move up the Z position. Oh, crazy, it's huge. All right, let's just shrink it a bit. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it up just a little bit. center it. I'm going to go back to scene selection and I'm going to add a texture to it. Look at this wireframe. That's pretty cool. Hit OK. Cool. R2-D2. Beep, 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 beep. All that for you, rebel scum. Uh, you know, it's kind of kind of going into the side here. So why don't we go ahead and 
shrink it just a little bit. Go down to the particle size, shrink it just a little bit. Cool. Man, this took no time to build. That's That just really speaks to how powerful Element 3D is. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use Metal from Skybox to take Element 3D scenes and turn it into a 360 video. Awesome, right? Anyway, if you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. If you've seen more than one of these videos before and you want to keep running on the journey and you already haven't done so, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We're in a relationship now, let's make it official. Anyway, I'm Eugene Cap and this is Cap and Design TV. I will see you in the next video.